Right, I'm Nigel, this is David, we're from Bay Bug, uh, that's the Canada Bay uh, Bicycle User Group and we're just doing a ride through today to get our first impressions of the diversion. Um, now what we both noticed is back up there where there's a, a yellow vehicle, there's a diversion sign for pedestrians which is yellow and what did you see? I saw a sign, a blue and white sign directing cyclists up the hill towards uh, Roselle and the city. But I saw, I saw two. There were two. There's another one a bit further up, saying Roselle and City, that direction for cyclists. Yeah. So there's a no diversion down this way. I didn't see anything. Okay. Now over there on the fence, there's a sign here, and there's two signs further up. You can't see it from here, but there's a map on the sign over there, which clearly says we're supposed to go down here, down this path, and pop out down the bottom of the hill there at Manning Street and take the Manning Street, uh, that, that's our diversion. There is not a single sign that we could see. No. And the other thing to remember is we've just come over the Iron Cove Bridge, which was chaos. Pedestrians going everywhere like cats. Yep. Know. Yep. And so you're concentrating fully on not crashing into somebody. You, you know, you're trying to get through these shoals of people. You don't have time to be going, oh, where's all the signage and spending, you know, a minute looking for stuff. It's got to be like that. It's got to be instantaneous. You've got to see it and know exactly where you're going. None of that. I couldn't see it. No, it wasn't there. Right. So uh, step one, we're going to follow those signs there, which still exist. We're going to go up the hill, uh, which is what we're not supposed to do according to the map and according to the document that's online. But we're probably the only two people that have read that thing in detail compared to the Google Maps. So we know we're doing it wrong, but if we just come across that bridge as, you know, Jim and Bob, those signs are all we've got to go with. So we're going to follow the signs. And those uh, maps over there, they're on page 81, so really easy to find. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and they mix up bus, bus users. Yeah. Uh, local residents who are driving, pedestrians and cyclists. That's right. All that information is mashed into the one map. And no street names. No street names. So you have to open up the, the document in one screen and Google Maps in the other and read through it and go, what were the street names? I don't know. I'm not a resident. I don't know where bloody Manning Street is. <laughs> sure. All hey, right. Let's go. Let's do it. Yeah. Before we go on, let me give you a bit of background here. I rode through the diversion on the 16th of April, the day the diversion commenced. We then had a Zoom conference on Friday night that was attended by eight Baybug members, and we reviewed the video that I took on the 16th. Everyone was really quite incredulous when they watched the video, and we decided we'd do a second ride through on Saturday with another person, just to ensure that I wasn't having the lend of everyone. The idea was to have a fresh set of eyes look at the diversion, and to provide their unscripted first impressions of what we saw. Therefore, what you are going to see now is a mashup of two rides on two different days. Now, David and I both did some research before we did these rides, and what we did is we went to the WestConnex website and we pulled up uh, these documents from the document library. And these are the communications that go out to residents, etc. And there's, there's two here. Um, there's a monthly update from April, and there's a changes to connectivity. And what we used was these maps here. And as you can see, we're using this one, the Iron Cove Pedestrian and Cyclist Changes from the 21st of April. Now, let me just blow this up a little bit. And what we've done is we've come across the Iron Cove Bridge here. And where we are now is we're actually standing on this grassy knoll here. And we know that we now have two options. We can either um, go down here and then come up uh, Manning Street, or we can duck up this little side thing here and go down Burn Street. And what we noticed was at this point here, as we're coming across the Iron Cove Bridge, there's still signage at this point which says this shared path is open and the way to go to the city is up here. And as we and there's no signage directing cyclists to go this way to head down to Burn Street and, and Manning Street. And uh, we actually saw this problem at the other end, but let's just go with this map. And just to show this isn't a one-off, if we go to the monthly update and we scroll down, then we get exactly the same map. And the point I was making is if you look across here, you can see that there's multiple uh, types of information in this map. There's 
information for uh, for bus stop relocation. There's uh, you know alternative pedestrian route. There's an alternative cyclist route. There's work zones. There's road closures. Uh, so all this information that is required by different groups of people, different stakeholders, has all been bunged into the one map, and it would probably be a lot simpler to separate it out. Because you know I don't care about what's happening with the bus stops. I just care about where I need to ride. And I'm sure the users of the bus stops don't care about what's happening with, with uh, cyclists. Uh, you know, they, they should be separate pieces of information, separate maps, uh, and they'd probably be a lot clearer then for each uh, stakeholder group if, uh, if they were separated out into separate maps. And as you can see, as we come through this section here, David points up briefly to the right, and you can still see there's a sign that says the cycle route to the city goes straight ahead. And as we get to uh, just past that, you can see there's no signage on the fence to say uh, turn right here for cyclists to go down to uh, Manning Street or uh, to Burn Street. So we've made our decision to go back up to Victoria Road and to follow the signs and we keep on going along Victoria Road and what do we see? There's yet another bike sign saying go straight ahead to go to the city. Interestingly enough if you look at the sign above it it's been wrapped in black plastic to blank it out and you can see as we go along here there's several other signs where that's been done but obviously no one's bothered to come along and wrap up the, uh, the bike signs which should no longer be in use in black plastic. Um, now the other thing is we, we followed this along and what do we get to? Uh, we get to this place where it says uh, no cyclists. Okay, um, didn't see that the other day when I came through because I was so busy trying to avoid killing myself coming over the curb that I didn't read the sign and just continued straight through. But we read the sign, thought okay we won't go through here, we'll turn right, although there's nothing to say cyclists go right down the hill and we know from the map we're not actually supposed to be going down here. But let's go down here anyway and see where it takes us. When we got down to the bottom of the car park was the first of uh, nine signs, which were these tiny little bike direction signs. Uh, absolutely minute really difficult to see. Now I'm not going to show you everywhere we found them in sequence because it'll just take too long. Here's just a, here's just all the signs, these photos. And when we saw about the fifth sign I was thinking, look at the size of the pedestrian diversion signs compared to these signs. There's something clearly wrong with the sizing here. Where have I seen this before? Haha, <laughs> yes, I knew where I'd seen this before. Spinal Tap. Best mockumentary ever made. And if you've if you know the uh, the Stonehenge scene where uh, Nigel Tufnell confuses feet and inches, you'd know exactly what I'm talking about. The only reason I can think of why these signs are this size is that someone confused millimetres with centimetres. I mean, th there can't be any other reason for putting up such ridiculously small signs which are just totally useless and can't be seen by anyone from anywhere without a set of binoculars or a magnifying glass. From here, David just did a quick ride up the hill to check for signage and, and coming back again because what we wanted to see is if we had come off the Iron Cove Bridge and come down this path, was there a sign pointing us left here to go into the car park to go along Manning Street? And the answer was no, he didn't find any signage. But as we're going through the car park, what we did see was this beautiful big yellow uh, sign with a bicycle symbol on it. And it just showed that if a sign of this size and this colour had been used um, for the diversion, I don't think we would have any of the problems we're seeing here. I mean, just contrast this fantastic sign with these silly little signs that have been created and put up on poles. And let's think about the vegetation aspect of this sign that's been put here. Now, before I went out yesterday, I actually trimmed all my hedges, and I reckon it's probably going to be a couple of weeks before this diversion sign is completely obscured by vegetation growth by the hedge growing out. So is there a process that's been put in place to come back and trim these things, or is it just going to be overgrown and completely forgotten out, forgotten about uh, in May, and people have no clue where they're supposed to go? And now we have a look at the difference between what this looks like on a weekday and a weekend when there's no work going on. Now the first part is uh, obviously us going through on Saturday, and you can see there's no diversions, there's no streets blocked off to our left, whereas during the week these streets are usually blocked off. And the thing is, um, when we get up to Callan Street, there's a new sign that's been put in place, and you can see David pointing at it. But if we go to the clip that I shot on the 16th, which is when this diversion was supposed to start, there is no sign in place, and Callan Street is actually blocked off. But you can also see there's all this yellow detour signage in place, which 
on Saturday had been removed. So I don't know if this signage is uh, put down during the week and then is removed on the weekends, but it certainly made it really, really hard to find the diversion for cyclists because it's just, you know, as you can see, the signage is hopeless. And in fact, if we go to the map, you can see where we are. Um, from the 16th, I was supposed to ride up Callan Street, but it was blocked. So this is a, a point of where the diversion map and all the documentation that's been put out does not match the reality on the ground. And let's get a live reaction here. So what we're doing is slogging up the hill. I'm avoiding trying to get hit by that car coming towards me. It's a narrow street. We've got speed humps. It's mm, the surface isn't too bad, but uh, this is what seven, eight percent gradient going up here. And let's just listen to what happens. Which one? Here. Where? Oh, I missed it, did I? Oh, you're kidding. Okay, now who in their right mind put that there? Seriously, how the hell are you supposed to see that? That is just ridiculous. <laughs> I, got no, I got no words, I really don't. I missed it. Yeah, so you got pedestrians going that way, detour going that way. The bicycle. Yeah. Okay. So this is one way. So a pedestrian are we supposed to go left up a one way street? Let's just pause here for one second and have a look at the map. Because what we've clearly seen on the ground here is Springside Street is a one-way street and we can't ride up it. But if we look at the map, it clearly shows that it's, it's an alternative cyclist route and it appears to be an alternative cyclist route in both directions. And I'm wondering, if when I go and have a look at Google Maps, you can see here that I've circled a couple of uh, one-way street arrows uh, that's showing that Manning Street above Callan Street is one way. It's showing that McClear Street from the Spring Street um, Springside Street intersection is one way, but it doesn't actually show that Springside Street between the Clear Street and Victoria Road is one way heading south, uh, what is that, southwest or whatever. I have this horrible feeling someone's done the diversion from Google Maps and they haven't noticed that Springside Street is one way there. So this map in that case is completely wrong. I mean, that is just a massive safety issue that you're sending cyclists up a, a one-way street the wrong way. I mean, apart from being illegal, um, you know, that's horribly dangerous. Uh, I, so I don't know how that's come about, but um, yeah, that's just not good. Not good at all. Let's go back to the 16th when this opened, and I'll show you that I actually did ride the wrong way up that one-way street. And why did I do that? Well, firstly, I'm coming down here. I'm trying not to get uh, clobbered by those two pulling a sign out. I missed the one-way sign. I saw the detour sign, and I thought, Okay, this is where I'm supposed to be going. This is uh, Springside Street, as far as I'm aware. This is where the map tells me to go. There's bike symbols on the road, but, well, hang on. Why are all the cars facing towards me? <laughs> and then I realised, oh, bloody hell, I'm riding the wrong way up a wrong one-way street. <laughs> yeah, yeah, didn't quite like this that much, but, hey, uh, this is where the signage told me to go. So, that's where I went. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that, uh... Ooh. <laughs> and look, he's, he's not taking the detour. We stopped to take this sign, and just to show the absolutely bewildering plethora of signage that you can see here, it's, it's baffling, it's befuddling, it's distracting, it's mystifying, it's perplexing, it's confounding. Uh, it, it's... Yeah, we just had no idea where to go because there's signs on one intersection saying there's a detour, there's signs on the next intersection saying there's a detour, there's one for pedestrian, there's one for cyclists, there's one for drivers. It's it, You just can't figure it out as you're coming along here. We've got people walking on the road we're trying to avoid. The surface of the road is not in great condition. You've got speed humps you've got to look down at as you go over them. We had a driver coming up behind us that was pressuring us. It's like we've got to make a decision about where we're going. 
where do we go? It's, you know, you're just flustered about where you're supposed to go, and that's not good either. This next bit illustrates why I missed that the end, well, the shared path ends at this set of traffic lights. And the reason for that is I'm coming up behind these pedestrians, they've got a dog, I'm trying to work out how to get around them, the path is narrow, the surface is in bad condition, there's poles to avoid. I'm not looking up for signs, I'm looking at the, the hazards that are in front of me that I'm trying to avoid. And, and as I get around these people and their dog, there's another person there, I'm looking at them, will they step back, will they step into me, I've got to get around them as well. And I completely missed the fact that um, there's a end shared path sign there, so I continued up to where the VMS is. Now, when I came through here with David on Saturday, he actually pointed out there was uh, this end of shared path sign there because we'd been told by someone else that's where it finished. We went, are you sure? Um, but actually on the map, the map illustrates that uh, you can, well, you're supposed to continue going up here because the alternative cyclist route is marked as being on both the north and so south sides of Victoria Road past the set of traffic lights where the Bridge Hotel is. Uh, so again, the map, I think, is wrong. It's, uh, it's showing um, cyclists should be riding up a shared path, which is no longer a shared path. Another interesting difference in coming through here on a weekday to a weekend is that when I came through on Thursday, the left-hand lane of Victoria Road heading west was blocked off and there was a great big truck down the uh, further down the road uh, with it all blocked off. And when we came through on Saturday though, that lane was open. Now, traffic at the moment is well down because of uh, the lockdowns and obviously on weekends it's you know, low as well. And it, it begs the question of if that lane can be closed off for construction work and traffic is so low at the moment, instead of faffing around with this uh, you know, insane diversion, why not just close that lane off permanently? Well, when I say permanently, I mean, for, you know, for the life of as long as this diversion is required and send pedestrians and cyclists up and down that lane. Now, OK, it would impact on, uh, on the bus stop, but bus stops have already had to be re relocated to deal with this. That would surely be a much safer and easier uh, solution. Now, we're probably going to be in lockdown for another month. Um, now, maybe at the end of that time, traffic will increase again and, and uh, that, you know, that lane could be returned to traffic. But why not uh, look at that as, an, as a more sensible... Now, when we got to the corner of Moody Street, we were a little bit confused because we'd actually come up Moody Street because, as I pointed out earlier, Springside Street is one way. Uh, so we'd have to keep on going and we popped out at Moody. But on the way back, the signage is clearly pointing straight ahead to go to Dremoyne. Uh, and we're thinking, well, which, which way are we actually supposed to go? So we took photos of this to show that um, we were confused. So where are we, David, and where are we supposed to be going? Oh, <laughs> see, maybe this one, I don't know, or that one, who knows? Yeah, because we, we went up, we took that, didn't we? That's the yep. way we went up. Yeah. We've come back. But there's nothing to direct us down here, so we've kept on coming. I think we're here now, aren't we? I think so. Well, well, well there's no signs. I, I can't tell where we are. So are we supposed to go down here? I think we must be here because... Are we? Well, this is work site. This is work zone. And there's no path through. Oh, we, went, we actually went up Moody Street. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. We, we came up, up here. And then we went through, okay. We went all the way through. We went up Moody. And so, so we should have turned left on the Springside, down um, ahead of halfway up McClure, or whatever it is. How did we miss that? Maybe there was no sign. <laughs> I, I don't know how we missed it. Because I thought all the signs we got um, pointed us the right way. Well, there were a lot of signs. Well, there was a sign that pointed up that street, a little black and white sign that pointed up, up the hill. That's why we took it. In fact, you were coming up here, and I said, no, there's little signs pointing up that way. Yeah, okay. So, we, which way do we come up? We come, we come from... Up that one. So, we and came up... there was up a right turn sign. Yeah. But I didn't see any left turn sign that take us, to, takes us up Springside. But this is a one-way street. Well, and it's one way that way. No, no, turn to your left. No, yeah. the street we've just come out of is one way. So the reason we didn't turn left up here is because that's a one-way street. Yeah, true. So we kept on going straight up there and that's then took right. the next street, which is not on the map. That's right. So it would have been illegal for us to take the route on the map, as well as stupid. 
and and oh, it even says no entry. No entry. Yeah, it's bamboozling. I can't see any bike symbol signs anywhere. No, I think they sent a couple of guys out with a map and a whole lot of signs one afternoon in the Ute, and they just whacked them up where they thought they should. But it doesn't make sense. Yeah. And I was looking for a direction sign that was going to point me down the hill. I didn't even see that. Yeah, because it's offset. So over there, where it should be, is is and there. And it got to some trouble to drill it into the, the plate into the ground, and it's chopped up with a couple of pieces of timber, so the pole's vertical. So it spared no expense on the pole, and then put in the cheapest, smallest sign possible. Why don't they do things on the pavement? Yeah, and why is the sign not the size of, of that? Yeah. You know what? Why can't if that if that sign there was as big as that and yellow, and same had a detour. Bike logo. Well, it's got a bike logo. Then you'd see it. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. and you know it's a detour. So here we are at the end of Burns Street, and we've got Manning Street to our right that goes towards Brazil and the city and Darling Street. Now. There's a little sign behind us, a tiny, tiny sign that indicates if you're coming down the hill on Burns that you turn left and go up Manning. There's certainly nothing on the Bay Run, which is just over here to my left, to indicate that you come up the path towards Manning and continue towards the city. Yeah, yeah it's um, so the, the things we, we saw was really inconsistent signage really small signage. I mean that stuff is so small we had to stop at every intersection and two of us had to look for it and and a lot of the time it took us in some cases about 30 seconds before we actually spotted it which is absolutely insane um, and then there was the spot up there where there was the uh, we were, according to the map we should have gone the wrong way up a one-way street I don't know and, you know that wasn't picked up in, in pre-production um, and the, the pedestrian diversions are very clearly marked with large black and yellow signs that say pedestrians with arrows so there's an inconsistency in the type of signage they're using to put cyclists and wa walkers through these streets um, if they were if they were more consistent it would really help if they use both sides together uh, where they're needed and uh, yeah, along the route the route that's respectively correct for both of them um, and, and clearly from our experience, it's not just me that's, uh, you know, bamboozled like a befuddled baboon. Um, we were both befuddled and bewildered and yeah. Look, it's lost. been, I'd say it's been poorly planned, poorly executed, and it obviously hasn't been reviewed by anybody to see whether it works, <laughs> yeah. if there's any inconsistencies. And it really should have been, someone should have had a look over it, uh, somebody who wasn't involved with the actual planning probably, somebody independent, to see whether it actually works for a user. They talk about customer service being really important, but I don't think they're serious about it because of the deficiencies of what we've seen this afternoon. Yeah, I mean, look, the, the only good thing I'll say about these signs is they're reflective. You know, they're good quality and they are very firmly installed. But apart from that, they're a complete waste of space. They're very small. We, th we think something like 200 millimetres by 100, something like that roughly. They're very, very small. Yeah, like B5 uh, or an, an A4 folded over. Not even that, maybe. Yeah. I should have brought a tape measure. What I don't get is there's good signage that's put out on weekdays and then it's removed on the weekends. What's the point of that if the diversion is still active? There's some new, large, good quality pedestrian signs that have been made up. Uh, well, why can't the same be done for the cyclist diversion signs? I grabbed these ideas for signs from a Transport for London guide. Most of the pedestrian signage has been put up facing the correct way, but some has been placed parallel to the direction of travel rather than perpendicular. So you can't see it until you're almost next to it. And this is covered in a lot of the guides and standards and explained and, and clearly it's non-conforming. Cyclists appear to be diverted over a tall curb at this point, although I'm not sure if this sign is aimed at pedestrians and cyclists or just pedestrians. This was how it looked on Thursday and this was before all the minuscule cyclist signs were put up. Well, I'm assuming it was before they were put up because I certainly didn't see any when I went through on Thursday. Then we have the confusing signage that appears to send cyclists the wrong way up a one-way street. Now, but let's la wrap all this up with some lessons learned from Spinal Tap on gen getting dimensions correct.
the little children of Stone Age, beneath the haunted moon, for fear that daybreak might come too soon. think that the problem was that the band was down. I think that the problem may have been that there was a Stonehenge monument on the stage that was in danger of being crushed by a dwarf. All right? That tended to understate the hugeness of the object. I really think you're just making a much too big a thing out of it. Making a big thing out of it would have been a good idea. Nigel gave me a drawing that said 18 inches, all right? I know he did, and that's what now, I'm talking about. Now, the difference between feet and inches is not my problem. I do what I'm told. But you're not as confused as him, are you? I mean, it's not your job to be as confused as Nigel is. It's my job to do what I'm asked to do by the creative element of this band. And that's what I did. The Come audience on. were laughing. So it became a comedy number. I yes, it did. 